Awesome, thank you. We are doing Economics 1A and we just want to go through Unit 1 and 2 and basically master the principles. Uh, we eat, we sleep, we drink economics and it is not, not as complex as it may seem. It is just a matter of understanding the building blocks, the, the, the small, small microscopic principles, right? One step at a time, then you should be okay, right? If we have a look at the module guide, right? So we'll try to follow the module guide and get the help of the recommended textbook, which is Economics for South African Students. Uh, you can use the fifth edition, you can use the sixth edition. You should be okay. So again, we have shared the soft copy of the fifth edition. You don't have to buy the book. You don't uh, necessarily have to buy the books. It will only work for your first year, Economics 1A and Economics 1B, right? So if you have a look at the module guide, these are the things that you are expected to understand and explain uh, after going through unit one and two. You should be able to distinguish between macroeconomics and microeconomics, right? Macro and micro. You should be able to distinguish between needs, wants, and demand. And also you should be able to easily explain this economic problem of scarcity, right? And also understand the concept of opportunity cost, right? And I know Michelle went through the PPC so fast that people were left short. So uh, after this session, I'm hoping that we are able to understand what is the PPC and be in a position to state the three fundamental economic questions the three fundamental economic questions. Uh, we should also be able to understand the criteria in choosing whether or not uh, to have a capital in intensive or a labor intensive production process. And also uh, to sum it up, we should be able to easily identify uh, for whom goods and services are produced. Right? In an economy, there is production of goods and services. We need to then be able to understand who uh, get those uh, goods and services that are produced. Right. Again, let's also be in mind that we don't understand things at the same level. So we need to be patient with each other. There is no stupid question. If you have a question, please feel free to ask. Uh, if we have to repeat as much as we can, we shall do that. Right, we've got uh, a minimum of two hours in this session, so we are not in a hurry. We are not in a hurry. We we have to be able to understand each and every uh, outcome that is required of us. Right? Can we begin? Is that okay? Are we ready? Are we ready? Before we begin, can we get some feedback uh, from, from the session that we had? What's your feeling uh, regarding economics after the session that you had on, 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 on Saturday? Maybe a, a three, three, four people to just um, express their concerns, views, feelings, anyone? I think everyone that is in this meeting is someone that uh, people like to not in the the um and uh, your your line is, is breaking a little bit. Do you mind repeating? Mm -hmm. I'm saying a majority of the people that are in this session are the people that couldn't attend the last time. Okay. We have no idea. All right. So the majority of the people that are in the session were not able to attend okay. that session because there was uh, a need to the number of participants, which is a little bit unusual. Um, yeah. Okay. 
All right, someone else, someone else, those who attended, those who managed to attend, what's, what's your feeling towards the subject in general? Uh, what, what, what did you take out of the first session? Anyone, please feel free. This is our session. We need to participate as much as we can. Anyone who wants to say something, please feel free to unmute and and, and speak. Uh, Galaxy A50, I see your hand is up. You can go ahead. Uh, good evening. Um, the, the session was very interesting, but hey, the graph part was very big tricky for me. Okay. I start when we we're doing the graphs, yeah. The PPC or the PPF. The, the demand, yeah. yeah. Awesome. All right. I'll just be uh, someone else, maybe the last person. Please, please, please feel free to just unmute and go for it. Good evening, everyone. Um, on my side, the session was very interesting. Um, I got confused when um, I had to make a difference between microeconomics and macroeconomics. Awesome. Okay. Differentiating between microeconomics and macroeconomics. All right. Yes. Awesome. 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 Is there someone who shares a different feeling? All right, that's okay. Um, let's hope today we'll be able to achieve uh, this objective just to make the, the module clearer, right? And get rid of the confusion that <laughs> may have been uh, established during the first session. And the earlier you get comfortable in asking questions, in seeking clarity, uh, the better it will be. And the success of this session lies in uh, you being able to ask uh, for clarity where you don't uh, understand. All right, let's, let's get to it then and uh, try to dissect uh, unit one and two in the most simplest way that I understand. I've shared a, a summary also. Uh, I hope uh, some of us had the time to go through it, but nonetheless, we will try by all means to uh, do justice in this session. But um, what is this economics that we are talking about? What is this economics that we are talking about? Um, they defined it as a social science that studies uh, human behavior in relationship to uh, and and scarce means, right? And and scarce means, which have got alternative uses, right? So, uh, number one, it is a science, a social science. Why social? Because we are under we we, are, we want to study how humans behave when they are faced with uh, limited resources, right? When, when, when a person is faced with limited resources, yet they have unlimited wants and needs, right? This is uh, the simplicity of economics. We live, we eat, and we sleep economics, right? So every day we are confronted with this social science. Yeah, we may be uh, unaware of the fact that every day we have to live uh, this economics life. You have to de decide what do you have to do with your 100 rand that you have in the pocket, whether to buy food or whether to buy clothing or whether to buy something else that you might want. And now, so the study of this behavior of humans when uh, on a, a daily basis is what we call economics. Why do we call it a, a social science? Uh, someone might ask. Uh, in science, it's, it's very easy to take um, when you want to observe or to, to try and find uh, 
the relationship between two variables you put uh, in a test tube and observe probably have test tube A and test tube B where you've got uh, test tube A as a sample and test tube B as uh, what you want to observe when you expose that test tube B to certain changes. Right? So it becomes difficult then to do that with human beings because we don't have time to stop and freeze and leave like we are in a test tube. So it becomes a social science then to say, we study what is in motion. So every day, uh, humans are moving, and yet we need to study their behavior uh, when they have scarce resources and unlimited human needs and wants. Right? So what are we saying? We are saying in the world that we live in, we have what we know as resources. And these resources are limited in supply, right? These resources are limited in supply. Can someone tell me examples of resources that are limited in supply? Anyone? When we speak of resources and we're saying, as humans, we are faced with limited resources. Uh, in other words, resources are scarce, right? Resources are scarce. What do you think these resources refer to? What is it that you are faced with which is scarce? Money. Money is scarce. What else? Water. Water is scarce. Electricity is scarce, a very good example. Uh, besides the fact Job. that for the past few days, electricity has been in unlimited supply, mm -hmm. right? Jobs are scarce, thank you. Um, someone raise their hand, please feel free to unmute and go for it. This is our session. We will try to manage it properly. What else is scarce? Your fuel, your diesel, your... Awesome, your fuel, diesel, and, and there is almost all the, all the resources are scarce. But as human beings, we've got this unlimited needs and wants, right? Why do we call them needs and wants? Needs and wants. What is the difference between needs and wants? Someone to, to try and, and uh, differentiate between needs and wants. Needs are some uh, things that we cannot live without, like water, maybe air, yes. and then once is something that we can live without. Maybe we want another pair of shoes or something. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for, for giving uh, that example. And I know most of us through the COVID era, there's these two terms that we got to know of. And I'm going to use those as a way of trying to simplify it. When we speak of needs, we are speaking of what? According to the COVID times, the things that you are allowed to buy, essentials, right? Essentials, essential needs. Yes, essential goods and services. When we speak of needs, we are talking about the things that you cannot live without. Food, shelter, clothing, right? Food, shelter, clothing, health care. Those are the things that we cannot live without. Whereas our wants, right? They are classified as, as luxuries, luxuries. And you can have your designer goods. Just mentioned an extra pair of shoes. Uh, it might not just be an extra pair of shoes is a designer shoe. Um, what else is it can be a luxury or a one? Holiday in the Bahamas. Even a car. Launch TV. Uh, 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 please say again, as I had a car and someone- Yes, helped. the car, because you can live without it. You can live without it. It becomes a, a luxury, a want. We all want something. We all need something. And these needs and wants, they are unlimited. Do they ever finish? Yes or no? 
No. No, they don't. No, they don't. They nope. never finish. So they are unlimited. Now, economic simply tries to understand the management of past resources, right? How do we then juggle between this money that we have? Someone mentioned money. This money that we have versus our desire to have food, shelter, clothing, cars, holiday, and so many other things. Right? So when we study economics, we want to simply find the relationship between those two uh, limited resources or finite resources, which are less than our infinite ones. Right? Is it clear? It's clear. Awesome. So our, our, our resources have got many alternative uses. Your money, you can use it for so many different things, alternative uses, but you, you have to then make a decision. Right? So what are we saying? We are saying Hello. when you are faced with this problem of scarcity, right? which is the fundamental economic problem, right? scarcity is the fundamental economic problem. Why? Resources are limited. And when we are faced with scarcity, a choice has to be made. A choice has to be made. So when we study this economics, we simply want to understand what influences this choice. What influences this choice. Therefore, when you are faced with the fundamental economic problem, yeah. scarcity, a choice is made. Right? A Hi guys, sorry to interrupt. Please. Can you mute? All right, thank you so much. Please, if you are not in a stable environment, kindly mute um, so that we do not disturb the flow of the session. Tombega, I see your hand is up, please. No, I just wanted to ask people to please mute their mics and we will unmute when we are asking questions. Thank you so Thanks. much. Thank you for, for that. Um, it, it's always better if you only unmute when uh, you need to say something. And if at any time I break, please let me know. We, we are having a storm uh, where I am. So I'm hoping the network stays stable. Uh, again, if, I, if you are losing me, please just let me know. Now, let's, let's, let's proceed. We are saying if we are faced with this uh, fundamental economic problem of scarcity, a choice has to be made, right? When a choice has to be made, there is a trade-off, right? A trade-off. Now, what is a trade-off? It simply means you have to choose one over the other, one over the other. That is a trade off. You sacrifice, right? You give up one thing in order to gain another. That is a trade off. Now, when you do that, you are incurring what in economics is known as your opportunity cost, right? An opportunity cost. What is opportunity cost? Someone might be asking. So I will try to break it down and say, when you're faced with this fundamental economic problem of scarcity, and I'm deliberately repeating these terms, they might pop up in your, in your assessments, in, in your KCQs, right? What is the fundamental economic problem? It is the, the, it's the problem of scarcity. What is scarce? Resources. And we'll break it down and mention what are those resources. We will get to it in a second. But we are saying, when you're faced with this problem of scarcity, a choice has to be made. And when a choice has to be made, it results in a trade-off. And that represents opportunity cost. What is opportunity cost, right? What is opportunity cost? In economics, we would then define opportunity cost as the cost or the value to the decision maker of the next best alternative, right? The value to the decision maker 
of the next best alternative. We are saying, when you choose to attend the session, there are other options that you may have had in order to use up your time. What else would you have been doing? Someone, if you weren't sitting here uh, attending the session, what else would we have been doing? I'll be sleeping. <laughs> sleeping, awesome. What Watching else? Watching TV. TV. <laughs> yeah. What else? Going, cooking. To, going out, cooking, right? So now that choice that you have made has resulted in opportunity cost opportunity cost. Mm -hmm. So we are defining mm -hmm. opportunity cost, cost as the value of what else you could have been doing, right? What else you could have been doing. Uh, the opportunity cost of you attending this session is the value that you get from watching TV or for someone else, the value that you get from sleeping or for another person, the value that you get from cooking. So every time a choice is made, you incur an opportunity cost. If you decide to go to school versus going to work, your opportunity would then, your opportunity cost would then be the value that you get from working, including the salary that you would have gotten from work. That is the opportunity cost of going to school. Right. We will explain it even further. We will come back to it. But this is just to give you an overview of what this economics is all about. And each and every day, you are faced with this decision-making process. Am I right? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. yes right. For yes, one right. to attend the session, they, have to, they had to weigh up their options right sleep or attend the session right so a choice was made and why what in in this instance what what resources cuts in this instance the decision between watching tv sleeping and attending this session what is the resource that is cut time time awesome time is limited it is an example of a finite resource and that is all economics is all about that is all economics is all about whether you are looking at individuals at yourself as a person or at the economy as a whole or as a business there is always uh, choices that have to be made because of the limited resources and as early as we are into the the, the session, I want us to then understand this very nice economic term that will enable us to then be able to have this science uh, proven correct, right? Uh, to have this science proven correct, right? So uh, the term is borrowed from Latin and it's uh, pronounced as ceteris paribus, right? Ceteris paribus, ceteris paribus. Why is it important for us to borrow from this term, right? Why is it important for us to borrow from this term, right? So set par, right? Ceteris paribus or set par. Excuse my handwriting. I haven't written since I left metric, so it, it's a difficult process, right? Set pa, we're borrowing from Latin. Why do we need to borrow from Latin? Remember, we said we can't put humans in a test tube, yet we want to study their, their behavior. It simply means there is so many factors that affect human behavior. There is so many factors that affect human behavior, right? For example, uh, you attending this session is not only influenced by time. Am I right? It is not only influenced by time. What else influenced your decision to be a part of the session? 
besides time. Energy. Um, Energy. Trying to take it, trying to understand the subject. The desire to understand the subject. Right? These are very two other factors that uh, influenced you to be part of this session. Right? If you don't like economics or if you don't like studying, um, chances are you might have used your time for something else, right? So there's, uh, there's so many factors that influence one's decision. For example, the decision to attend the session. So besides the time, it is, are you feeling okay to sit and listen to the stranger that you don't know? Number three, are you interested in understanding the subject, right? But if we try to then bring into play all these factors that we have just mentioned, it might distort our understanding of your decision or your, the opportunity cost. It, it might be distorted to say, well, maybe I don't really like economics. Maybe I'm not actually feeling well, right? So it becomes a lot of things that you need to consider, right? Uh, so we simplify things by saying, uh, we want to hold all these other factors constant. Um, holding them constant simply means do not take regard of them, or even if they change, do not take them into consideration. So we are also saying we are holding them constant at a certain level and change. So we are simply freezing the other factors. For example, if I say um, your decision, uh, the opportunity cost uh, for you to attend this session uh, is watching TV set par. It simply means I'm not taking into consideration all the other factors that might have influenced you to attend this session. Um, I'm not putting into consideration what else could have influenced you. Let me give a better example. Uh, if I put it to you that, or if I can pose this question, um, the price of bread, let's, let's assume we all eat bread for breakfast. We all eat bread for breakfast. If the price of bread increases, what happens to your demand for bread? I know we haven't explained demand or any of that, but I know you understand what I'm trying to say. What happens when the price of bread increases? Do you buy more or do you buy less? Well, I pose the question. We buy less. We buy less because it's expensive. When the price of bread increases, chances are you buy less of the bread, right? Is is that is that okay? Is that is that the the the, the normal thing to do when the price yes. of a, of a product increases? As consumers, we buy less of that. Correct. That's correct. Correct. Yes. Yeah, sure. Okay. All right. Let 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 me see on the chat. Are we agreeing to that? We've got fifty five people in now. Do we all agree that if the price of bread increases, we buy less bread? Yes. 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 Sir, can I can I say something, sir? Yes. Yes. Um, I know that it's it's we'll buy less because the price is increasing, but then there's a need for it. Because even though the it. price is increasing, my kids still need to have bread every day for school. So oh, for me, sir. it's hard to say that I, I'm going to buy less because I still need the bread. So yeah, that's just my opinion. I love that. I love that. And I'm seeing on the chat, someone someone is also agreeing with, with the, the lady just that spoke. It's not necessarily true. Now that's economics. That's economics. It's not necessarily true that when the price of bread 
increases, we buy less bread. And she mentioned a very important thing, the need, the need for bread or the taste. Let's say I like bread. I like bread. I will classify the need as a taste. If I really need bread, whether it's the price increases or not, I will still buy bread. So we've just proven that it is not entirely true that if the price of bread increases, um, the demand or my demand for bread will, will decrease or I buy less bread. In order for that statement to be true, in order for that statement to be true, that's where we bring in set par. Right? How, someone is asking, how? How do we bring in set par? So I can then rephrase the statement and say, if the price of bread increases, the demand for bread will decrease set par. Now the statement is correct. Why the set par? We are holding all other factors that affect one's demand for bread unchanged, or we ignore all the other factors that might influence one's demand for bread. What are the other factors? Whether do I have, uh, do I like bread? Taste, how many people I'm buying the bread for, the number of people that are going to consume the bread. Number three, the price of an alternative uh, product. What else I can replace bread with? Maguinha, uh, paninis, any other thing can influence my demand for bread besides the price. Uh, are you getting to where I, I want us to get? The demand for bread is not necessarily influenced by the price only. There is other factors that affect one's demand for bread. But in order for me to qualify the statement, I do not have to regard the other factors. So my demand for bread will decrease if the price of bread increases set par. The Ceteris Paribas assumption simply holds the other factors that might influence my demand for bread constant or unchanged. So we are saying taste remains unchanged. We are saying the price of alternative product, whether it's a substitute product, remains unchanged, right? So we, we don't put them into the picture. I'm not sure if, if that's clear enough. Is it clear? Or I need to repeat? No, it is clear, sir. It's clear. Yes. Um, can I ask something? If yes. if that, that that scenario does it also uh, okay? Or oh, when we talk about liqua? Yes, everything. So you have to borrow this set pie in order for you to, in economics because it's a science. There are so many factors that affect our behavior, right? So in order to understand this science. We, we hold constant other factors that might distort uh, the explanation or the, the, the theory that we want to, to prove, right? There's, for example, the example that I gave is the theory of demand, the theory of demand, right? So in order for this theory to be true and not distorted, I have to hold or ignore, right? Ignore other factors that might affect my demand, right? The theory of demand. So I can give another example to say, as a firm, as a business person, how much I supply, right? How much I supply is dependent on the price. So if the price of uh, savanna increases, I will supply more savannas because I want to make money. Is that correct? That's true. That's yeah. true. But it is not entirely true because my supply of savanna is affected by so many other things besides just the price of savanna. Is that true? Yes. I, okay. Maybe I don't have enough raw materials to produce the savanna. 
So it is not entirely true that if the price of savanna increases, I will supply more savanna, right? But I can qualify the statement by saying, if the price of savanna increases, the, the supply of savanna will also increase set par, right? What does that mean? Just ignore the other factors that might affect my supply of savanna. Ignore keep them unchanged, freeze them, just put them in a box somewhere, pack them. Don't bring them into the picture. That's what set par is. This will help us understand economic theories from the onset. If you understand set par, then you are sorted. It simply means I will and attend the session set par, right? I will attend the session set par. If you ask me, are you gonna attend the session in the evening? Yes, I will attend the session set par. What, what, what does that set par simply mean? Ignoring other factors that might affect my participate, my attendance. What are other factors, whether there's electricity or not? That's the closest. Okay. Is it, nah, is it making I sense? Yeah. For Awesome. Nompu Melilo has posted a question. Uh, the recording, the recording, uh, at least an hour after the session, it would have processed. I will share it. Right. So now we are getting to understand these economic terms that help us then understand the, the subject a little bit better. Right. Set par. And now we are comfortable. When it comes, you will know when, when you see set par, the terrace paribas. Right or CP, you will know that it's saying ignore the other factors and just focus on this factor that we are examining in order to explain this theory. Right, in order to explain this theory. Right, right. So that was just the introduction of of what is economy, a social science which studies how limited resources are used to satisfy unlimited human wants. We will come back and then try to explain what are these resources in economic terms. We, we just gave our uh, basic understanding of these resources, right? And it, 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 it makes sense for us to do that now. Now, let's, let's, let's move on uh, and, and try to then distinguish between microeconomics and macro. And here is the key, the key word, right? Micro and macro, right? And in this semester, we are doing micro. In this semester, we are doing micro. And here is my, my basic explanation of microeconomics. If you did science, you would put something in a microscope. Am I right? Why do you put something in a microscope, someone? Those who did science, why would you put something under a microscope? I think it's to see the deeper cells. To see the deeper cells, someone else? Uh, I was saying to see clearly the other variables that you cannot be seeing with the naked eye. To see, to go deeper and try to see that those uh, particles that you can't see with the naked eye. To do the say is to magnify, right? So with microeconomics, we are simply zooming in to the individual participants of the economy, right? We are zooming in. We are simply looking at the economy with a microscopic eye, right? So what is this microeconomy? It simply studies how individuals or groups of individuals make economic decisions within an economy. So in this part of the semester, in this first semester, when we are studying microeconomics, economics 1A, we are simply studying the behavior of individuals and firms, individuals or households. So households or individuals is used interchangeably. So we can say individuals, we can say households, right? And firms. So a firm is one business unit or a market. So a group of firms. That is micro, right? How individuals behave or how households behave in the economy versus 
how firms, a single business will behave and a group of businesses, which is a, a, partic a, a particular market. For example, the market for cars, right? In the market for cars, uh, firms who supply cars, if we say in the market for ice cream, firms who supply my cream, ice cream, it's still a microscopic view or microscopic understanding of the behavior of the individual participants in the economy. And when we are studying microeconomics, we will look at variables such as your, your demand, your supply, your prices, and the it's the prices of individual goods and services. Hence, if you remember, I spoke about the price of bread. That is micro, the price of bread, the demand for bread, the supply of bread. Now, when we talk of macro, which is what we are going to be looking at in semester two, economics 1B, we are simply going to then look at uh, this branch of economics that looks at portals or that looks at the economy as a whole and that looks at what is the aggregated level, aggregates, totals. Hence, we listen to the budget speech, Hence, we listen to uh, the Minister of Finance. When he speaks, he doesn't speak about households, one household, households. He speaks about the economy as a whole, the performance of the economy as a whole. So we are talking about your GDP, your gross domestic product, how much has been produced in South Africa. That is macro, total. So we are simply uh, in a bid to determine the overall level of economic activity, right? We also, for example, want to understand how many people are unemployed in the, in the economy, not in a particular sector, not is John unemployed, no. But macroeconomic six tend to study the economy as a whole, right? Total income in the economy, the price of goods and services, not the price of bread, not the supply of bread, but the price of everything, which is known as your, your general price level. And with that, we are able then to measure variables like your inflation, which refers to the changes in the general price level, right, in the general price level. Right, Dimakato, the, the recording will be shared at least an hour after the session. Right. So we have differentiated now between micro and macro. Is it is it clearer? I think there's someone who mentioned that they got a little bit confused in the session. Did this simplest explanation help? Yes, it does. It does. Thank you so much. It is my desire that at least one person understands from point A to point D where we finish. One, right? Thank you so much for, for that. Thank you so much for the information. So now we've differentiated between micro and macro. The key word there, micro, microscopic view, how individual participants. So you can see we are zooming in to the economy and breaking it down to individual participants. How does John decide whether to buy bread or not? How does Temba decide whether to take a bus or to buy a car? This is what we'll be looking at. How does uh, Albany decide how much of bread to make and how much of rolls to make? Those are the decisions of firms. How does Gukumancha decide whether to sell tomatoes or whether to sell maguinha. This is microeconomics, right? Individual participants of the economy. All right, let's move on. All right, so what we are doing is just to establish the building blocks. And I hope we are moving together and no one is getting lost. If you are lost, if you are sitting at the back of the class, Please raise your hand, I will see you, and I will try to explain it until you are sitting in front and hearing it loud and clear. 
at this moment, please feel free before we move on. Is there someone who is saying they are lost? I will gladly repeat. Happiness? Happiness. Awesome. Happiness. Thank Happiness. you. Let's move on. Economics is not difficult. Depends who um, helps you in, in, in the understanding of the module. Now, this is basically the background of, of what uh, this, uh, this module guide is about. So if, if you understand uh, part A, part B will be very easy, part B. So here we are looking at uh, core issues of economics, market mechanism, demand and supply, and elasticity. And then we move on to part B, cost of production. This is now the firm, what determines uh, the firm's decision to supply at what price they supply it. Perfect competition and perfect competition. Then we are done with the module. You go into the exams mining. Now, we've explained this. We've explained this, a recap, right? What is the fundamental economic problem? Scarcity, scarcity. What, what does scarcity talk about? We are saying resources are limited in supply, whereas wants and needs are unlimited, right? And a choice must be made amongst a limited set of possibilities. If you are a firm, you have to decide what to produce, what goods and services to produce, or how many, how much of the good or service to produce, and how to produce these goods and services. And with the how, with the how, um, you, you have to then decide whether do you use labor, which is labor intensive, right? Or whether do you use capital, which is capital intensive. And we will explain what is capital in economics. I can, I can give you a, a heads up. Every time we mention capital in economics, we are not talking about money. Please make that note. If you are highlighting it, highlight it. Capital is not money in economics, right? You have to switch. If you are doing economics, when we talk of capital, we are not talking about money, right? We are not talking about money. And put a star there. We will come back to it. We will come back to it. Right? We explained uh, the fact that when a choice is made, you are incurring a trade off, right? Having one more of, uh, one thing means that you are le having less of something else. There is a trade off, right? And when that happens, there is opportunity cost that you incur, right? And the opportunity cost, we defined it as the value to the decision maker, to the decision maker, the value to the decision maker of the next best alternative that could have been chosen but was not chosen. I will repeat, opportunity cost is defined as the value to the decision maker of the next best alternative that could have been chosen, but was not chosen. Very important, identify what is. Can you repeat it again for me, uh, sir? Value to the decision maker of the next best alternative that could have been chosen but was not chosen right what else you could have chosen but it is the best alternative you might have five alternatives for your time but the the one that stands out as the best is your value of the opportunity cost, right? It is the value of the opportunity cost, the value to the decision maker of the next best alternative. Um, someone, Bukarabello is requesting for the slides. I can promise you that whatever is on the slide is exactly what you have in the module guide. I just did it for presentation. Sometimes word for word, Right, it's the module guide, but I will share this this uh, presentation. I will share this presentation. 
Right, so that is opportunity cost. And I, I have an example. I know Michelle might have also brought the example in the in the in the in the, in the session. Um, in order for us to understand opportunity cost, it's very important. It will come in your KCQs. It might come in your exam. I want everyone to grasp it and and get it once and for all. I believe in get it right first time, and once will be enough. And I, I forgot to mention this, that I also am a firm believer in, in learning beyond the exam room. I want uh, us to be able to apply what we have learned beyond the exam room. So we are not studying just so we can make it through the exam room. We are studying that we might become economists. We are studying that we may become accountants. So it, is, it goes beyond the paper. And this is what I want people to grasp. Uh, once you understand these principles, you are sorted for life. The exam, the distinction becomes just but a byproduct, right? This is what I believe in. We are not studying just so we can pass. We are studying so that we can be change agents wherever we are. We want uh, learners who are able to be effective in their different uh, communities. Whatever you've learned here, you need to apply it uh, in, in life. Therefore, you become effective. So you are not just passing time. You are investing in yourself and you know this for life. You just don't know it for the exam, right? You know it for life. Hence, I, I emphasize on understanding these principles that you are sorted for life. Now, going back. Uh, Mr. S? Yes. Yes, back on to the opportunity cost. I want to see if I'm able to make an example to understand it, right? Yeah. So um, let me make an example. For example, with a company, let's say Coca-Cola, right? So uh, let's say for argument's sake, they also do produce Pepsi, right? Mm -hmm. So, but mainly they want to introduce pepsi so they will look at what the market would prefer or what actually goes faster so they'll sacrifice pepsi to sell coke instead of pepsi you are right but now when we look at opportunity cost mm -hmm. using that example that you've, you've brought up it simply means the opportunity cost for coca-cola producing pepsi is the value yes. that they would have gotten if they had produced Coca-Cola. Oh, uh, okay, got it. The cost, the value of the next best alternative uh, sacrifice or foregone, the cost of the sacrifice or the cost of the next best sacrifice. A simplest, simplest example that I gave uh, was if you decide to go to school versus going to work, your opportunity cost of going to school would have been the value that you derive from working and the salary that you would have gotten from working. Oh, yeah. I think I saw it on the module. Got it. Yeah. Yes. And also, um, if you have got an option to buy Coke and a, and, 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 a, and, a, and a pie, so if you buy Coke, it will be the value that you get from, from buying a pie. Something like mm -hmm. that. So it is what else, the value of what else you could have uh, chosen, but not chosen. Let me let me give you an example. Uh, maybe Michelle hasn't hasn't done it. Uh, I've got an example here. I took it from 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 Michelle's class. It is a Sunday, and Martin decides to attend a rugby match, which costs him three hundred rands and takes up two hours of his time. If he had not attended the rugby match, he would have read a couple of magazines. This is a typical KCQ question for those that are curious to, and to know what questions to get or to expect in a KCQ question. This is a typical question. His opportunity cost to attend the soccer match is A, 300 rands, plus the value of reading the magazines, B, only 300 rand, C, the value of reading the magazines only, D, zero because it's a Sunday and these are recreational activities. Let's discuss. 
What do you think? A did not C. Okay, I'm getting a C. Uh, 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 I think I'll prefer A. I'm getting an A. Mr. Lindo, A. A. All right. A, Galaxy A. A, C. All right. C. I think C. I'm getting a C. I'm getting B, only 300. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Anyone C. C. I've got a C. All right. Anyone who would like to justify their answer? And I've got a D. So we've got all the answers. We think all the answers are correct. Anyone who is feeling confident to justify their answer. This is now the, the essence of economics. And it takes us back to if you would put economists in a room, they would never reach an no. agreement. Right? If you put uh, two economists no. in a room, they might never reach an agreement. Um, there's someone, there's someone no. who's trying. trying. It's so careful. Oh, let you come out. No. Okay, I think she is talking to someone else. Right, before we get to the explanation, the essence of, of, of economics is, is proven in the fact that we can put two economists in a room and they might never reach an agreement, right? Now, economics is about being able to prove yourself. That is the trick with economics. You need to prove yourself. Right, Felana says, um, okay, uh -huh. just before we got to Felana, Nolutando says she can't hear anything. Are you able to hear me, guys? Yes. Also, yes, we can hear you. Uh, can someone please try to help Felana maybe on the chat to if she can? Uh, uh, you, you are here. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, no, Lutando, not Felana, sorry. No, Lutando. Right. Felana justified her answer uh, as C because instead of reading a couple of magazines, he decided to attend a rugby match. So the opportunity cost, according to Felana, would be only the, the value of reading the magazine. Do we all agree? Mm -hmm. Some, some, some agree. I've seen a couple of seeds. Mm -hmm. Right? Someone else okay. with a different answer to uh, justify. There's someone. Uh, there's no name. There's no name. Uh, you can go ahead because your hand is up. I needed to identify you. You can go ahead. Um. Yes, I was going to say the same thing. I was going to say C, because um, for opportunity costs. You have to choose one choice and forsake the other. And he chose to attend the soccer league match instead of reading the couple of magazines. Therefore, I think the answer is C. Hence, the answer is C. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And those who say A, B, and D, I will go with C because they've tried to ju they've justified their answer. If you don't justify your answer, uh, I won't be able to go with your answer. Right. Uh, and Mototi says, I'll go for A because he is spending that he could have used to buy more magazines and he could have used the two hours to work and make more money. All right. No, the, the, the alternative, the alternative is not working. The alternatives that we are given, it simply means if you are given two, it simply means that is the next best alternative and you don't have to bring in other uh, alternatives. So what do you do? You set par all the other alternatives. You just work with the alternative given, right? So uh, the I first part mean? is correct. Uh, just the same. Hello. Okay, so. Ne? Of saying that he's spending mm -hmm. what else you could have you, you could spending he's spending three hundred rand because he could have used it elsewhere. Yes. 
Yes. Okay, thank you. I was saying my answer will be A because he chose to go to a rugby match that will cost him 300 rand and take him two hours, which would have been the value that of, of he would have used to, to read the magazines. Awesome. So we've got two distinct uh, explanations. Which one do we go with? In economics, when it comes to KCQs, when it comes to the OSA, which is going to be your multiple choice, right? There is an answer that seems correct, but there is an answer that will be correct test, if ever there's a word. Right test. There's an answer that seems right. There's the answer that will be right test. According to the two explanations, there's one answer which is correct, then there is one answer which is correct test. Pardon my English. So that's like most correct answer. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. There's an answer which is correct. And there is an answer which is the most correct answer. Awesome. Janine, Lindogushe, Galaxy A50, uh, going for the most correct answer. A. Is A the most correct answer on the house? C. Yes. Yes, it is. Someone still saying C. No, it's, it's yes. A, C. C is the most correct answer. C is the most correct answer. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Kumbulani, if you don't mind. Yes. Uh, what is your counter argument uh, regarding A as being the answer? This is now economics. You discuss. You prove your answer. Kabile is team C. Please prove your answer. <clears throat> you Look at the definition. You, go, you can go ahead, Mr. Kumbulani. Yes, sir. I was saying for me, Martin sacrifices time to read the magazine. I attend the match. The sacrifice is to read, he sacrificed reading magazines. Yes. Purely based on that, you would go for C. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, Galaxy A3, 4. I, I prefer if you guys put names, you know, it, it brings life. I, I, I get to know who I'm interacting with. But nonetheless, Galaxy A3, 4, uh, you'll go for B. There's no value to reading the magazines. All right. 300 is the value that you would have spent. All right. Now, can, can, does someone want to explain the meaning of value? I, I know I mentioned it. I know I mentioned it. Value. In this instance, when we talk of value, we are talking about Time. Satisfaction. <laughs> Satisfaction, right? Not yeah. as in monetary value, but the satisfaction that we get from reading a magazine. The satisfaction um, before, a long time ago, uh, opportunity cost was de decided, was de defined as a cost, but it's not a cost. It's actually a satisfaction or the value that you get. So the value that you get from attending this session, right, versus the value that you get from sleeping. So please take note, we are talking about the satisfaction, the benefit that you derive from uh, choosing something. Right, um, user is, is choosing C because uh, he chose the best alternative decision. Instead of re, uh, reading, he chose to watch soccer. Right. If you follow, if you follow the uh, definition of opportunity cost, the value to the decision maker, the value to the decision maker. If if we were not told, but I, I'm going to explain it so we move on. If we were not given the how much he spent, then the answer would be C. Right. I want you to 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 understand me here. If the question doesn't have 
the amount that was spent, right? There's two aspects of, of cost here in this example that is given, right? If we were not given the monetary value of what we spent, then the answer would be C, right? So if you chose to watch a rugby instead of reading magazines, the opportunity cost would have been reading magazines. But because now this 300 rent also has got alternative uses, then it has to come into play according to the definition of opportunity cost. It could have been saved. It could have been deposited in a bank and gotten interest. Then the opportunity cost to Martin in this instance is the opportunity cost of the 300. So we are not saying it cost him 300. No, we are saying this 300 could have been used for something else. It could have been saved. Plus the value of reading the magazine. So C is correct answer, but A is the most correct answer because now he spent 300, yet that 300 could have been spent elsewhere. Right, Janine, please, please uh, go ahead. I, I see you've got a pressing question. I'm sorry, I just, um, can you hear me? Yes, you can go ahead. Okay, I just want to, um, just to add to what you're saying, I'm, I'm just um, making reference to the manual. Um, opportunity cost is a key concept in economics as it captures the essence of scarcity and choice. So the scarcity here would be the financial uh, but, so, but am I correct? The yes. 300 rand. Yes. Okay. So we remember we, we, we established the fact that when we talk of economics, there's resources that are scarce. So yeah. when you are faced with scarce resources, you have to make a choice. Yeah. And and this this resource has got alternative uses. So in this instance, the 300 has got alternative uses. His time has got alternative uses. So the alternative use of the 300 could be savings and an interest. Yet he spent it in, to, to pay for the rugby match, plus the time, the value of that you would have gotten from reading the magazine is another opportunity cost. So this is the most complex question that we, we put to use an, as an example. Um, we will uh, share past exam papers, uh, we'll have to look, I've, I've got uh, some, to help us practice. So you begin with the end in mind. So the end for now is the exam. So it would make uh, more sense uh, working with practical examples for, from the exam uh, using past exam papers. So uh, I will have to look and, and see how, how many, how much we can get uh, from uh, past exam papers and we share, right? If someone has past exam papers, please share, right? Um, Lauren says, it takes us back to wants and needs, leading to choices, yes. Every time a decision, a choice is made, there is a trade-off, you forego one for the other, right? Is there someone who's saying they, they don't understand this opportunity cost that we're talking about? before we move on. I think I would need more examples to I understand. Need more ex all right, all right. Uh, Mr. Sibanda, may I come in? Yes, sir. All right, it's Tabo speaking here. I've just also posted another example on the chat. On the chat, I'm looking where, at it. Where, where it says James works as a consultant and earn 500 per hour. Mm -hmm. It is a Saturday and he decides to attend the soccer league match instead of working. Mm -hmm. The cost of the soccer match is 250 and it takes up two hours of his time. Mm -hmm. His opportunity cost to attend the soccer is you either choose A, B, C. But before I answer, uh, maybe the person that I'm trying to uh, assist, they can just pick in answer, then I can elaborate more on it. Okay, awesome. If um, I give you the answer, just one the lady that we're trying to explain more for you. To her. help. Yeah, okay. Then I'm able to tell you what is the correct answer and you also elaborate more. Awesome. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that example. Um, okay, I think let me go through and answer it. So remember yes, so before you do that, here, before you do that, okay. the table, um, we are missing D. No, it's only three of them, A, B, C. Oh, it's only three. Okay, that's fine. Yes. Let's let's give two yes. minutes, two minutes for, for people to, to try and, and figure it out. Um, okay. That's as part yeah, of the I learning just process. Read it. Okay. Let me see if I can put it up also. Right, just two minutes. Please go through it and, and, and post your answer. All right, let me see if I can just put it up there. Is everyone able to see that? Yes, yes. Yes, yes, we can. All right, answers are coming through thick and fast. And here, I love it. <laughs> Uh, it seems like we own the money, Mr. Tabo. All right, so I'm gonna take another different uh, term in terms of trying to explain this. I'm not gonna go with, I think, the terminology of the That's value you're using. I'm gonna say I've got uh, I've got person A and person B. Both of those people, they've got 1,000 rents in their bank account. And person A decides to go and watch the soccer match and not go and work. So it means out of the thousand rent he has, he's going to deduct 250 and pay for the match. It means what he's left with is 750. Then you've got person B. Person B decides not to go and watch the game. He decides to go and work. <clears throat> and if you look at the, the sentence, they say it takes two hours of that person's time. And if he goes and work, Per hour, he gets 500 rand. So it means if he had worked that two hours, he's got 1,000 more. Mm -hmm. So if we look at person B, on top of the 1,000 that he had, he went and worked and earned another 1,000. It means he's got 2,000 with him. But if we went to uh, person A, he's left with 750. If you check the difference in terms of amount, what is the difference? 2,000 minus 750, we are left with 1,250. It goes back to that, that to say, Remember, you taking that, that 250 out is already a loss. Mm -hmm. That's the first one. Then the second loss is the what you could have earned in terms of an income. So I think by saying person A now has got 750, person B has got 2,000 rents. The difference is 1,250. Hence, we can see. Um, I hope that answer, that summarized, I just tried to take a different way in terms of explaining. So this basically still goes back to mathematics. Awesome. Thank you so much for, for that. Brilliant explanation. Thank right. Thank you, Mr. 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 Tabo for, for, for that uh, example. And again, you if you meet something like this, please feel free to share. Right. If you are going through your past exam papers and you find questions like this, please feel free to share for the benefit of everyone. And we would like to appreciate Mr. Tabo for bringing this up. Right. And I, I appreciate the fact that almost everyone, uh, when given this explanation, this example, um, we, we, we came to see, right? So remember now here, according to the definition of opportunity cost, the value to the decision maker of the next best alternative 
that could have been chosen but was not chosen. In this instance, if Tabo goes uh, to attend the soccer match, if Tabo goes to attend mm -hmm. the soccer match, we are given the clues. Tabo is <clears throat> attending the soccer match for 250 rand, so he will part ways with 250 rand. Right. It takes us two hours of his time. Two hours of his time. So what else could you have been done? Could have been done with these two hours? You could have been working and earn 500 per hour. So he spends two hours, which you could have spent working. So it's 500 times two, which is equal to 1,000. And he has also forgone the value of the 250. The 250 could have been earned elsewhere, right? The, the, the 250 could have been and elsewhere, right? Uh, so the total opportunity cost will be 1,250, right? Which is the cost of attending the soccer match, which is 250 plus earning the 1,000, right? So that is the opportunity cost to James. That is the opportunity cost to James. Right. We will look for more examples, more examples uh, we share in the group, we discuss, right? The, the purpose of the groups is for the interaction and Mancosa does not create these groups. It is by the students, for the students. We interact, we interact as much as we can. Uh, and in the interaction, we, we, we observe the, the respect towards one another. We speak uh, kindly. Um, we, we also respect the times, not odd hours. There is working moms, there is working uh, fathers, you know. We, we, we just be respectful towards one another and con be considerate, right? And it will help us from now until the end. This group, these groups will be in existence from now until you graduate. And the relationships that we are establishing now are for... Uh, the period of our life, uh, if I may, you know, we, we will interact and interact until whenever, right? So make use of these platforms. They are for us to uh, discuss more examples, right? Um, uh, for now, I think we, we, we can uh, move on. For now, we can move on and continue. We can move on and continue. Right, we are back here. Now, so we've explained opportunity cost. We've given an example. We want to then move to uh, this uh, PPC or PPF. Right, so we are saying in order for us to then have a clearer understanding of this scarcity, choice, and opportunity cost, we make use of what is known as a PPC or a PPF. Right, so PPC or PPF, Production Possibility Frontier or Production Possibility Curve. It's a curve or a frontier, right? PPC or PPF, right? One and the same thing, PPC or PPF. It enables us to then understand uh, this concept of scarcity and opportunity cost, right? Scarcity and opportunity cost. But before we do that, I want us to go back uh for for the benefit of someone and this this is gonna be uh beneficial even when we move on to uh, other units so we spoke about limited resources and this is what we want to establish now uh what are those resources referring to to economics so we are saying in economics when we speak of these resources we are talking about uh, what is known as Factors of production, right? We are talking about factors of production. When we talk of limited resources, we are talking about the factors of production. Factors of production. And the factors of production, they are four. And this is your land, labor, capital and 
entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship or enterprise. Land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. And um, this is a crash course. I'm, I'm going to try and explain everything uh, quickly. If you are taking notes, I hope you, you can write fast. So when we talk of these limited resources, we are simply referring to what is known as the factors of production. So we are talking about land. Land is sometimes to referred to as natural resources, right? So when we speak of land, we are talking about land and minerals. Land and minerals. This is uh, all natural resources, right? L natural resources. And we refer to labor as uh, the human effort. Labor is, is self explanatory, it is the human effort. So, and now we speak of capital. And remember what I said about capital capital is not money, and money is not a factor of production. Right, money is not a factor of production. We will get to learn about money in next semester, right? But now we only need to understand that money is simply an agent of exchange or a medium of exchange. Sorry, a medium of exchange, not a factor of production. So when we refer to capital, we are simply talking about main made resources uh, that are used in the production of other goods, right? Main made resources that are used in the production of other resources. In simple terms, when we talk of capital, we are talking about machinery or equipment, right? Equipment okay. or machinery. You hear most of the time they talk about capital expenditure. We are simply talking about investing in goods that are used to produce other goods. Capital goods are goods that are used to produce other goods. So it's simply referring to your machinery. Entrepreneurship is uh, in simple terms, uh, those people who come up with ideas of, of, of establishing businesses. So you need these four factors of production in order to produce. And all these factors of production, uh, as we begin, I want you to understand that they are owned by households or individuals. They are owned by individuals. Firms will have to buy these factors of production from households, okay. right? Fam yeah. buys these factors of production from households, right? Factors of production, land and minerals or natural resources, labor, which is the human effort that is used to convert, um, that is used to convert uh, these, all these inputs into a, a finished product. Uh, we also have capital, which is goods that are used to produce other goods, your machinery, your equipment, and entrepreneurship, right? And also, as we begin, I want you to then take note of the fact that when firms buy these factors of production from households, they earn rewards. They earn rewards. So what are we saying? If a firm pays uh, for land, what are they paying? So we'll call it land, natural resources, mineral. What are they paying? What is the land. one? What do they get? Land. Yeah, land. They get rentals. So the land 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 is land. Land. for for land is rent, and for labor, the reward for labor, what is it that we get? Salaries. Salaries or wages. Salaries. Right, capital. What does capital get? You machine, your They're getting interest. Interest. They get interest. Interest. As entrepreneur. Yeah. What do they get in return? They get profit. 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 They get profit. profit. I want you to understand this from the onset. The reward for land is rent. The reward for labor is wages or salaries. The reward for capital is interest. The reward for entrepreneurship is profit. Right. So these are the factors of production. Now let's move on then to uh, trying to then explain uh, the, 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 this scarcity uh, using the PPF, which simply 
looks at a combination of two different products that could have been produced in an economy. So here we are assuming, or we are just using two products, right? We are using two products. We assume that this economy is producing only two different products. So set par, whatever else could have been produced. We are, in order for us to understand the PPC, we have to use two different products, right? Uh, so what does the PPC tell us? It gives us the maximum attainable output, right? The maximum attainable output that could be produced, right? The maximum attainable output that could be produced in an economy at a given point in time, given the full utilization of resources. It gives us the maximum attainable output for an economy when they use all their available resources. And in order for us to qualify this, we will continuously make assumptions as we go on in economics. We will continuously make assumptions. Right. In order for us to, to understand <clears throat> the PPC, we have to make assumptions. Uh, these are qualifying assumptions that make us easier to understand this principle. Number one, we are assuming that we only, the, the, the resources are labor and capital. So as we discuss the PPC, set par all the other things, labor and capital is what we, we are taking into consideration just for the sake of understanding this PPC. Number two, um, the availability of labor, capital, and production technology for the goods is given, right? Don't say it depends on how much labor is there. Don't say it depends on capital. It's given, it's given. And the maximum is represented by the boundary or by the curve, right? These are just assumptions to say the, the labor comes with, all the inputs, uh, capital, machinery, or technology, it's given, right? We assume that it's given. We don't try to find it. We don't try to crack it. Number three, we are only looking at two products, potatoes and fish, potatoes and fish, potatoes and fish, um, food and car, right? So we assume we, we are zoning in and just use two goods, two goods in order for us to understand this uh, scarcity. Mm -hmm. Now, a PPC would look like uh, something like this. So in economics, a theory can, explain, can be explained in words. It can be explained in a schedule like this, a table. It can be explained as a graph it can be explained as an equation, right? This is how you explain a theory in economics as a, as a, in words, you can just explain it in words. You can explain it as a schedule or a table. You can explain it as a graph or you can explain it as a, an equation. So now this is the production possibilities that are open to this farmer, right? This farmer, remember we're saying, we assume that given the use of maximum resources. This is the PPC, that's the assumption. If this farmer uses all their resources, land, labor, technology, seeds, whatever, it's given, right? It's given. So don't crack your head about uh, seeds, how much land, whatever, it's given, right? So we are simply saying, according to the schedule, it's given. Don't try to crack your head where it comes from. It's given. This farmer can only be able to produce 40,000 tons of soya beans if they fully utilize their resources, right? If they take all the resources, they are only able to produce 40,000 tons of soya beans, uh, which we will label as 0.8. So if they do that, if they produce 40,000 tons of soya beans, there is no resources that are left for the production of wheat, right? 
there won't be any resources to be used for the production of wheat. So they have fully utilized their resources towards the production of, of, of soybean. But then if they want to have a mix, they now have to sacrifice 10,000 soya beans. Can you see? In order for them to produce at least 38 tons of wheat. If they want to have wheat in their economy, this farmer in their farm, if they want to have some wheat, producing 38,000 tons of wheat means they are now only able to produce 30,000. Remember, we're saying the PPC gives us the maximum attainable output combination. Right? So in order for you uh, to produce one, you have to give up production of the other. Isn't it what we said? 10, 2052, 1060, 065. Yes. So in order for you to produce more of wheat, what do you do to soya beans? You sacrifice production of soya beans. That's what it means combinations of maximum attainable output. If you want to produce, to increase production of wheat to 52,000 tons, you sacrifice soya beans. It means you are only able to produce 20,000 tons. You have sacrificed 20,000 tons of, of soya beans. That's the, the, the opportunity cost. Producing more of wheat requires sacrificing soya beans. That's what the PPC tells us. <clears throat> it, it seeks to explain the concept of opportunity cost, right? A trade-off. In order for you to produce more of the other, you sacrifice soya beans. If you want to produce more of wheat, you sacrifice soya beans. If you want to produce more of soya beans, you sacrifice wheat. So this is different output combinations, different output combinations. And this information can be put on a graph. This information can be put on a graph. Simply plotted on a graph, this now becomes the PPC for this farmer, right? This information here is now plotted there. Remember, we said if this farmer wants to produce 40,000 tons of soya beans, it simply means they won't be having any other resources left over to produce wheat. Hence, for producing 40,000 soya beans, you produce zero wheat. Right? Harriet, don't get lost. Don't get lost. Follow this. We are saying this PPC gives us the maximum attainable output combination. These are the options that are available to this farmer, right? I will try to find the wording that is as simple as, as possible. So we are saying for this farmer, because of the scarcity of resources, they are limited to producing these combinations. For this farmer, because of scarcity of resources, they are now able to produce that, right? Um, in order to draw it, it it's, very, it's very simple. You, you won't be required to draw it, just interpreting it. But now in order to interpret it, you need to know where it comes from. Right, so let's, 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 let's uh, if, if, if we may, point A, point A here simply means 40,000 soya beans, zero wheat. 40,000 soya beans, zero wheat. Viewer is asking, do the products being compared or using the PPC need to be in the same category? No, right? No. Just potatoes and fish. Potatoes, you're farming. I think your module guide has got potatoes and fish. Potatoes is farming, fish is fishery. And different industries are a good example because we will explain another concept that we learn from the PPC, right? And I will get to it. Um, if you produce 30,000, you can only be able to produce 38. That's point B. So this is what we did. 40 and zero. So you plotted there, point A. 30,000 versus 38,000. So you're only producing at B. 20,000 
of soya beans means you can only produce 52,000. So you plot C. Um, 10,000 soya beans means you can only produce 60,000 tons of wheat, right? And if you produce 65,000 tons of wheat, you won't be able to produce any soya beans. So it's at zero. And if you connect these points, you get a concave shape. Hence, the PPC has got a concave, is concave to the origin, right? Uh, Sese2 is asking, will we, will we always be given the maximum amount comparison or will we be asked to calculate in order to get the difference? You won't be required to calculate anything, right? You won't be required to calculate anything. Uh, this will be given, right? This will be given. So what we are doing here, we're taking you from where it comes from and then interpreting it is what will be required for you in the exam or in the KCQ. And KCQ1, uh, I forgot to mention this, KCQ1 will be from unit one to three. KCQ2 would be unit one to five. And the OSA would be everything. So please take note of that. KCQ1, when it's opening, you are only going to be examined for unit one to three. I know someone will ask in the group, uh, KCQ2 would be unit one to five, right? I hope this gives you some ease. You won't be questioned on everything, right? And yeah, so the PPC, Can you, you will be required again, to interpret. Please say again. I'm saying our test two, you said uh, which unit you're gonna cover for test two. KCQ1 will cover unit one to three. Okay, and two? One to five. One to five. Yes. Okay, thank you so much. Awesome. Right. So we are saying we have plotted this according to the schedule, right? And it, it gives us a concave shape, concave to the origin. This is the origin. This is your x axis, x axis, y axis. So just a simple interpretation of this axis. So this is the origin, x and y. So x is the independent variable y is the dependent variable right but that's not important for now so we are saying for this farmer these are the maximum attainable output combinations they can only produce on this line so points along the ppc so points along the ppc represents Maximum attainable output. If you are operating here, you are operating at maximum capacity as this farmer. Are we, are we together? What is maximum attainable output? It simply means you are using all your resources all your resources, if you use all your resources, you produce on the line, whatever combination. What are we saying? If you choose to produce 30,000 tons of soya beans, you will only be able to produce the resources that are left after producing 30,000 tons of soya beans, the resources that are left can only produce 38,000 tons of wheat. Right? So these are your output combinations. What you can produce, the resources are scarce, okay. such that you can't produce 40,000 tons of soya beans and 65,000 tons of wheat at the same time. You have to choose, you have to incur a trade-off, right? What is the trade-off? If you choose to produce 38,000 tons of wheat, you have to sacrifice this amount of soya beans. If you choose to increase production of wheat, to 52,000, you have sacrificed this total amount, which is 20. So every time a choice is made, you incur opportunity cost. So what does it mean? When you produce more of wheat, it simply means sacrificing more and more of soya beans. What are we learning? Opportunity costs are increasing as you are moving along the PPF. As you move along here, your opportunity cost is increasing. That's what we learned from this PPC. Number two, what happens if you produce here? I will label this F. 
what happens when you are producing at point F? Let's say you are producing 20,000 tons of soybeans and 38 tons of wheat. What does this mean? It means you are no longer you are operating in efficiency. You are no longer operating at efficiency because at any given time, if you are operating at efficiency, you need to operating around the borderline where is A, B, C, D, and E. So anything below that is the under below the unattainable region, then it's inefficient. Inefficient. So anything within, inside, or below, yes, it's attainable, but inefficient. It represents unemployment. It represents unemployment. Someone is asking, how do you determine which goes on the X or which goes on the Y? It doesn't matter. It will give you the same shape. It will give you the same shape. Like I said, you won't be required to draw this. Don't crack your head as to why is soya beans here, why is wheat there. Right? Don't crack your head there. It's given. So you want to focus on the interpretation. Right? Remember, it's multiple choice. It's given. Right? Don't, don't stress yourself. Right? Points within the PPF, within, when we say within, it is this blue area. It represents that you can produce. It's attainable. So point F is attainable but inefficient. It represents unemployment. If I was going to use a macro example, it simply means South African economy. When it comes to uh, employment, we are operating inside there because of high levels of unemployment. We are not fully utilizing our resources inefficient because you are not fully utilizing your resources. If you were fully utilizing your resources as this farmer, you would be able to produce along this line. Is that clear? Noted. All right. Now, I will take this point and put G. What, what happens if, if you want to produce at point G? So at point G, you probably have 50 there. And 65. Are you able to produce 50 soya beans and 65 tons of wheat? Point G. No. no. The no. That is where no. scarcity. Like, the scarcity yeah. Yeah. That's where scarcity comes into play. Awesome. So it's unattainable because we don't have enough resources to produce beyond the PPC, right? We don't have enough resources to produce the PPC. Can you see now how the PPC or the PPF explains the economic problem of scarcity? Are you able to, to see that? So, Points beyond the PPF are unattainable. There is no resources to produce at point G. The resources that are available can only give us points along the, the, the PPC if we are fully utilize, utilizing the resources. If we don't fully utilizing, we don't fully utilize the resources, we are in, in the attainable region within. So we're not being efficient. We need to be efficient and use maximum output at any point there. But on that uh, curve, along the PPC, we learn that producing more of wheat requires sacrificing more of soya beans. Hence, opportunity cost increases as we move along the, the PPC or the PPF, right? Opportunity cost. And you can, you can actually see that the opportunity costs are increasing. Are you able to see that? If you produce more of wheat, what, you, what is sacrificed increases also. At first, you are sacrificing 10, but you move, if you move along to produce at point C, you are now sacrificing 20. If you continue to move along and, and produce at point D, you are sacrificing 30. If you produce at point E at 65, you are sacrificing 40. Uh, say two, please say your question, Dimakato. You say you don't understand point F. I just chose at any point within here. What are we saying? You are inefficient because you are not using all your resources. If you were using all the resources available, 
you are going to be on the line. So it represents unemployment. Points inside any point, it can be any point, it can be there, it can be there, any point inside here represents inefficiency. It represents unemployment. Mm -hmm. There was a hand, there was a hand. I don't want to leave Cesar too. Yes, 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 sir. I just want to ask, um, let's say now on the soybeans, yes. um, we are at 30 and then um, our points interact maybe on the wheat it's 65. So how, where, how um, do we 65. go up? So we are here. Yes. Let's say now the wheat is 65 and the soybeans, it's, it's 30. Then I was, and it, it says unattainable region. So mm -hmm. how do we go about that one? Because it is not more than the maximum. So what do we say there? Thank is you. It, is it not more than the maximum? I think it's yes. more. I think it's more. It's not, it's not more on the soybeans because soybeans is 40. So now we are saying soybeans is going to be 30 oh, okay. and then it's going to be 65. Okay. All right. I see. I see. I yes. see what you're saying. Does someone yes. understand what, what she's asking and want to try before I, I give an answer? No, I, I, can she repeat the question again? I, I didn't follow. Okay, so you're saying what if you produce 30, you want to produce 30 tons of soybeans and 65. So you are somewhere at point I. Because it's not, we remember she's saying, we say the maximum attainable output for soybeans is 40, but now we are at 30. The maximum attainable output of soybeans is 65. So what if you produce 30 and 65? Risking for scarcity. All right, scarcity. It, 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 the answer is in scarcity, yes. But how do you explain why it would be uh, impossible for us to produce at point I, which represents 30 tons of soya beans and 65 tons of wheat? All right, because of limited resources. Because of limited resources. So what we say, yeah, we don't, yeah, yeah. We don't have enough resources. Thank you, Kabila. We don't have enough resources to produce this combination. This combination is impossible because in order for us to produce 30,000 tons, the resources that are then left can only make us to produce 38 not 65. We don't have enough resources to produce uh, 30 tons and 65. I'm not sure if it's making sense. It does make sense. So it's explaining this fundamental economic problem of scarcity. Resources are limited. We might want to produce 30 and 65, but we don't have enough resources. If we produce 30, the remaining resources enable us to only produce 38. If we want to produce 65, it simply means we are left with no resources then to produce soybeans. So soybeans will be at zero. We are not able to produce. This is explaining this economic problem of scarcity. Points within the PPF are attainable but inefficient. Along the PPC, it's attainable. Maximum output. Beyond, we don't have resources to produce there. Now we are learning the characteristics of, of, of the PPC. It is concave to the origin, meaning that opportunity costs increase as you move along the PPC. If our PPC was a straight line with a 45 degree, there is a straight line with angles equal, it simply means there is no opportunity cost. I'll right, give you an example just so, so it's clear. We are saying if, if ever there was no opportunity cost, right? So it's, it's concave to the origin or bowed outwards because of, of the specialized inputs, right? Of the specialized inputs. What are we saying? It's bowed outwards because we are saying the resources that are required for, for the production of soybeans 
not easy for you to then transfer them to the product in a week. Hence, you have to sacrifice more and more of the other in, in order to produce uh, wheat. So the, the, the law of increasing opportunity costs, as we see, it's because it's not easy to transfer resources from one industry to the other, from one industry to the other, right? That's why the PPC is concave. And this is part of your unit. No, it's part of, on page 15, on page 15, why do opportunity costs increase along the PPC? It's difficult for you to transfer resources from one industry to the other, from soybeans to wheat, right? So that's why there's increasing opportunity cost. It could be motor vehicle industry to building, construction. It's difficult to, to, to move resources. That's why there is increasing opportunity cost uh, from one industry to the other. Now, um, we can use the PPC in order for us to then look at between consumer goods and capital goods. So remember we said what are capital goods? goods that are used to produce other goods. Consumer goods, these are simply goods that are used and consumed by consumers, produced to be consumed by uh, households or individuals. Now, so what is the relationship between uh, PPF and the economic issues of scarcity, choice, and opportunity cost, right? So points outside of the PPF beyond, they indicate scarcity. They, they are unattainable because of the limited supply of the factors of production. So producers are then free to choose any production combination along the PPF, right? And points within the PPF represent inefficiency, they represent unemployment, right? Um, the choice of producing the different combinations along the PPC indicates the concept of opportunity cost. You have to give up uh, more of the other in order to produce the other product, right? To produce one more of the product, you must produce less of, 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 of the other product, right? Uh, we can also use the PPF to illustrate economic growth and, and technology or improvement in, in technology. So what, what is economic growth? When you are able to produce more with the same amount of resources, remember we said resources are limited, but now, for example, there's a te technological advancement you are now able to produce more with the same uh, resources. It simply means your economy is now growing. And in, in, in an economy, there has to be a trade-off when uh, between consumption goods or consumer goods and, and capital goods. So as a, in, in, in an economy, you have to choose whether you produce consumer goods, what goods, what individuals are going to consume, and find a balance between uh, producing capital goods, the goods that are used in the production of other goods, right? So the, the, the investment in capital goods will enable the PPC to shift outwards, right? To shift outwards. What is a shifting outward of the, the PPF, right? The shifting outward, it simply means you can produce more with the same resources, right? So if you look at, if, if you, there's uh, economic growth, your PPC with the same uh, resources is now at G, right? It is now at G instead of at point F, right? So we've jumped, we've jumped to, to unit two, right? You've, we've, we've included unit one and two in the same session. So increase in technology simply means our output has increased with the same resources. It means our e PPC will shift outwards from this F, the black one, to this color, which I don't know what it is, right? So curve F, because of economic growth, we are now at uh, point, uh, curve G. Why? Because if we invest in the production of capital goods, uh, in the production of capital goods, <laughs> we are able to then increase the capacity for the economy with the same resources to produce more consumer goods. Right, so these are just two scenarios for two different countries, uh, the combinations of producing consumer goods and capital goods. But the, 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 the essence of this is to try and illustrate economic growth, which is represented by a shifting outward of the PPC, right? A shifting outward of the PPC results in an 
improvement uh, in the capacity with the same resources caused by uh, improvement in technology, innovation, and, and all that, right? So um, when your economy is able to produce more, so we are saying the maximum attainable output has increased, right? The maximum attainable output has increased, then uh, your PPC shifts outwards. There are instances where your PPC swivels uh, in one, in one, uh, on one axis, I will explain that. But now if there are no specialized resources, if you use the same resources to produce black shoes or brown shoes, the curve won't be curved, won't be concave. It will just be a, a straight line. Uh, a straight line PPC represents constant, constant opportunity cost. It's constant. Whether you produce brown shoes or black shoes is because it's, you don't, there's no specialized resources. There's no specialized resources, hence the opportunity costs are not increasing, they are constant. They only increase if uh, you, you are using specialized resources, it becomes concave to the origin. All right, I missed one. I missed one. Right. We in, in the next session, which is unit three, unit three talks about the circular flow of income and spending. Right? Unit three, the market mechanism, the circular flow of income and spending. Right. Um I only missed. Let, let's go back. Yeah. <clears throat> If we discover, if we discover a way of, um, I will start with wheat. Let's say this farmer invests in innovation and technology and they discover a, a way of, of producing wheat more efficiently with the same resources. What does it do to our PPC? It simply means with the same resources, instead of us, Oh, it's nine o'clock, Lauren. All right, I, I get I get so carried away um, with when it comes to economics. Is I, I know someone uh, concentration span might be uh, tired for the first session. All right, um, can we can we can we stop here? Is that okay? Uh, we have maxed two hours. We oh, can no, 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 let's, let's proceed. Let's proceed. Let's proceed. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Must I finish up? Please, that, please. Just this part please. only. Thank yeah. you. If you allow me, I will do that. So just this part. Please bear with me. I know you need to sleep, but let's let's get some more done. Opportunity cost, right? And I see people are leaving already. We don't have a time limit to continue. Thank you so much for allowing me. So we are saying, um, if if we find a way of producing, or there's a technological advancement in producing wheat, we should be able to produce probably, let's say we are now able to produce 80 tons of wheat with the same resources, right? Uh, with the same resources. Uh, it now gives rise to a new PPC because of the improvement in technology. Hence our new PPC, we haven't found a way of improving soybeans, right? But now because of the improvement in technology, our concave swivels, right? Swivel, this is the swivel, right? We call it a swivel of the PPC because of the improvement in production technology for wheat. We are now able to produce more wheat with the same resources, uh, innovation and, and, and all that, right? I will respond to Harriet shortly. I will respond to, respond to you, please uh, bear with me. So I just explain this swivel. Now, so we are saying, there are instances where in an economy, this farmer discovers a new way of producing more wheat with the same resources. So it gives rise to a swivel of the PPC, a swivel of the PPC. And the interpretation of this swivel is very important because it might come in your KTQ. What then do, how then do you interpret this? Um, there's, there's a lady who gave us an example of point I, right? Saying, what then do we do, right? 
um, if we discover an improvement in technology, let's say for wheat, <clears throat> and we have a swivel, we might then be able to produce more wheat. Uh, we might then be able to produce this combination I. Can you see now that it's possible? Is it now possible? Yes, because we've yes. discovered a, a new way of producing more wheat, right? With the same resources. It gives us then an allowance of producing 30 tons of uh, soya beans and 65,000 tons of, of, of wheat. So all this swivel simply means that it also affects the production of soya beans, except at point A. Only will point A remain unchanged. If you choose 40, then you are only able to produce zero. But at any other point, the combinations change. The combinations change. You might get that question, right? If there's an improvement in technology on the production of wheat and there's a swivel, only at point A will the production of soybeans remain unchanged. But uh, any other point, you are able to produce more wheat with the same amount of resources because of the swivel. So the swivel can be on wheat, the swivel can be on soya beans. Let's say you discover a, a way of producing soya beans, innovation and all that, and you, you get to produce at point uh, there, 850, right? What does it mean? There will be a swivel. There will be a swivel. It means the output will remain unchanged only at E, but the combinations will change along the PPC. You now have a swivel of the PPC because of the improvement in production technology. Remember, we still have the same resources, right? We still have the same resources. So this causes uh, just a swivel because you are now able to produce more with the same resources. Hence, uh, on, a, on a broader scale, countries should invest in, 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 in innovation and technology. It increases the capacity of the economy. And now we are saying, if there's an improvement in technology in both wheat and soybean, there's economic growth, which is what I explained to say, the curve will now shift outwards. The curve will now shift outwards. When it shifts outwards, it gives rise to a new PPC, which is probably uh, if we, we have an improved technology for both, we are now having a new curve, which goes something like that. If you check it, it has shifted outwards. That's uh, economic growth, economic growth. So yeah, briefly that was uh, about the swivel. I know it might come uh, economic growth when your PPC shifts outwards, when your PPC shifts outwards, and you are now able to produce more with the same resources that are available. Is there any questions? Now, um, <clears throat> I will answer. There was a question to say, uh, are we doing also met? Yes, yes. Uh, if you may, now I can confirm met for Thursday. Mets, if you are struggling with Mets, if you're struggling with Mets, you can join us on, on, on Wednesday. You can join us on Wednesday. Right. So, yeah, for the sake of the recording, I think I can, I can stop this recording for the benefit of those uh, mm -hmm. who would want to catch up and then we, we do some housekeeping. Um, any questions related to the, 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 the items that we've mentioned in the session while I'm still recording? Was it helpful? Uh, is it better now? If you missed the session, do you think um, uh, you are okay? Let's let's have some feedback. Let's get some feedback. I I missed the session, the Saturday sessions because I had connectivity issues. Um, but with the sessions, um, thank you very much because now I I think I understand much better the graphs in terms of the productivity, uh, the PPCs and the PPFs. So this session was very much helpful to me. Thank you very much, sir. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. I can see also on the chat there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. For Matt, I will share the link. Uh, yes, sir. You can go ahead. 
Now I'm saying thanks a lot, man, for this session. It really cleared a lot of issues where there was just a bit of confusion. Mm -hmm. And I like how you present the content using example. It makes it so much easier because with the economies in the exam, mm -hmm. they are very clear because most of their questions is not like from the books, it's more scenarios. Yeah. So with how you conduct it, it makes it easier now for preparing for those uh, exactly. assessments that are about to come. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for the feedback. All right, all right, all right. Uh, I think I can stop here. Stop recording. Don't don't exit yet.